you'd like. And just start to notice the flow of the breath. Inhaling a little slower and a little bit deeper than usual. And allowing your awareness to rest at your heart. Bringing your awareness and your breath towards your heart and just noticing what it's like here in this moment. And seeing what it may be like to bring to your mind's eye something that you feel appreciation towards. Maybe a person, a pet, or a special place. Well, let's just leave it on yours and then have that. Allowing yourself to invite the feeling of appreciation into your physical body. The feeling of gratitude for who or whatever this may be to come in to be felt by you in this moment. Even if it's just a little edge, a little tiny, dip your toe into some gratitude. Or maybe it feels easy and you let it wash over your whole body. Whatever it is, just being with it for a moment as you breathe. And then finding if there's a little bit of movement that would feel nourishing to your body in this space. Maybe you want to stretch or twist. Maybe your body wants to just sit still. Maybe you want to shake or wiggle. Letting yourself move for a moment. And only when you feel ready, allowing your eyes to open once again. So thank you. And once again, welcome to anyone who's just joined us. My name is Aria, and I am a facilitator and a coach. I work one-on-one -on -one with folks and also in groups um, around connecting with the heart and with our, our powers, our fullness of the human experience, stepping into empowerment in our leadership. And I am so, so honored to um, get to introduce Emily Blayfeld. Um, she's been a, a very key part of my awakening process and um, a dear, dear light in the world. Um, for those of you, I know many of you know her, but for those of you who do not know her, um, she uh, is very gifted in healing ancestral trauma. And um, whoops, we are getting a screen share. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that's happening. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Randy. <laughs> um, so uh, with, with that, um, again, thank you all for, for gathering tonight to dive into um, this very, uh, very significant information during this time. And um, I look forward to, uh, to all that unfolds in this coming hour. Mm, thank you, Emily. Thanks, Aria. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, great. Um, yeah, thank you so much for that introduction and also for hosting me. 
Um, just before I start, I just want to let you know, I, I tried to copy and paste into the chat screen um, something that I have wanted to share with folks before the thread starts, and it wouldn't let me copy and paste for some reason. So I forwarded it to you, Aria, by email, and I wondered if once we get started, you could, you could do that. Um, okay, cool. Um, it's awesome to be with all of you and to see so many faces um, virtually uh, considering the circumstances. I know that um, the World Wide Web has been buzzing with all kinds of community offerings and people are coming out of the woodworks uh, just to, to share their gifts and create space for connection. Um, and for me, this is like, I've been hoping for this time for a long time, this, this level of heart-centered, um, support and connection. I just never thought it would be in this way where I'm, you know, behind closed doors and across a computer screen from you. So this is, um, I greet the opportunity, feel privileged to be here and um, just want to say a couple things about Aria. Um, I, Aria, I met Aria when I first began um, uh, Seeing With Your Heart, which is the uh, foundational uh, company that I, that I lead and um, the services that I create. She was, she, we called her our mission magi magician when she was collaborating with me in the very beginning of, of starting this work. So it's sort of full circle for me to be here with you, Aria, on your platform called Rise in Resiliency. Uh, we were uh, both serving um, a woman who was facilitating sexual uh, a retreat on, on healing sexual trauma. And both Aria and I had come as, um, support in, in serving the, the women in that retreat. And I was just so moved by Aria's capacity to hold space for um, the depth of trauma that we greeted and her capacity to kind of um, channel the shadow and uh, help people move through their darkest shadows. Um, so I, you know, right away afterwards asked her if she would work with uh, my partner and I in, in Seeing With Your Heart and we, we launched all sorts of programs. So she's really a part of my grassroots effort in um, some of the, the greatest services I bring to the world. She's like, she's like in, she's in the roots with me. Um, so to be here with, with Aria as she's creating a space for you to root, um, for you to be with this uh, pandemic shadow, um, to you know, sit in her container and feel the way she's reaching you know, across the, the world um, and bringing people together and sharing skills and somatic experiencing. It's like, it's like what Aria does every day, but to be with her in the, um, in the darkness and in the light for this experience is just a, a total pleasure and honor. And it feels, yeah, it feels like a full circle. So um, make sure to check out her website and what she's up to as well. Um, and just all the different things she's, she's been doing for years. Uh, so thank you, Aria, for having me here. Um, and, uh, I asked, I asked her to, um, post on there a whole bunch of energetic hygiene practices. I could probably do like 10 weeks of, um, a course on like supporting the empathic heart, uh, during times when the collective field of consciousness, you know, seeps through our, our cells and our membranes and drops into our heart. And you can't really tell the difference between you know, where your heartbeat stop, beat stops and another one comes in. Um, there's so many different practices uh, to utilize for just spiritual and energetic hygiene on a daily basis. So I just pulled out some of my favorites um, that I wanted to share with you. You should be able, I couldn't copy and paste, so you should be able to copy and paste from the chat screen once she posts it um, and just throw it into a Word document or if there's a way to share the document with you later, I can do that as well. Um, but I just wanted to put some kind of tools and techniques um, out, out there because we'll be doing more of an experiential process um, uh, today. So, yeah, I think in this, the thing I want to speak about is just my, um, my own experience, I think, with the, with the pandemic panic. Um, just, just the other night, I was laying in bed and it was 2.30 in the morning and I woke up with this just um, you know, pounding heart and I felt like I couldn't breathe, um, sort of suffocating, um, had a, kind of a suffocating feeling in my body. 
And I just laid there and I thought like, who, who is this? You know, who is this, this impulse? Who is this, this, this symptom inside of me that it, I, I knew it wasn't me. I knew this wasn't my panic. This wasn't my sh uh, shortness of breath. And I tuned in, closed my eyes, and I had an image of one of my uh, dear friends. Um, and two minutes later, she, she texted me and shared that she's having trouble breathing, that she's scared, and she wondered if I was awake. Um, that's just an example of any, any empath's experience on an everyday basis. That um, you know, many, many times we feel the feelings or the symptoms of another in our own bodies. And particularly those we love the most, we care about the most. Um, this one, this person I had found out a day earlier um, was struggling with uh, the symptoms of the coronavirus. And um, she was kind of in the thick of, of her experience with it. She's now recovering and doing, um, doing much better, but that was kind of the moment of fearing death. And you know, she reached out to me, but I felt her before, before receiving the text. So this, this call is really intended for those of you that, that um, feel the collective, you know, that feel the, your, your loved ones, that feel the, the panic, that maybe live with somebody who's really scared and you're actually in, in healthy vibration, but you're kind of absorbing the consciousness and the energy of those anxious folks around you. Um, you know, where, does you, where do your feelings stop and, and another's begin? Um, my, my, you know, typical jam in, in, in my work in the world is to help um, healers, sometimes healers in hiding that don't know they're healers, but are, are healers at heart, um, to help, you know, shamans, witches, alchemists, uh, family constellation facilitators, energy practitioners to kind of, you know, step into the world, um, shine their light step into their their soul's unique blueprint and purpose and and bring their work forward um and right now so, so many of those people are facing um you know a question on how to pivot their business how to how to pivot their healership how to respond with technology um you know how to how to be with the the scarcity fears that are arising around either their their own life and their movement forward or their bank accounts or their their practices well being, or perhaps they are they employ um, they're you know owners of centers or yoga therapy practices and have a bunch of employees that they that they serve. Regardless of the the issue, there's there's many that are reaching out, you know, feeling this collective pulse. I keep calling it the pandemic pulse in their body. This like vibration, this beat that's there, and and are questioning. You know, how do I calm my body? How do I calm my soul enough that I can integrate the message? There's, there's a greater message here um, on a collective level that we're being asked to, to drop into. Um, uh, for, for many of us, um, I guess I wanna just ground in what I could say. Um, for many of us, we've been feeling the polar ice caps melting and the human encroachment on animal, the animal species for, for decades, generations perhaps, um, and been, have been waiting for the time for humans to wake up, to become the highest vibration of themselves, you know, to be using our finely tuned instruments for you know, collective balancing than collective destruction. And um, in some ways, this feels like that time where, where you know, the pollution has gone down, Animals are coming back into the villages and the towns and the cities, and there's you know space for you know the earth to breathe, to breathe in a different way. And yet we're 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 sitting alone with ourselves in this sacred pause, this like pregnant stillness, uh, this quiet that is um, full of energy, just like full full of energy. So I I wanted when Aria asked me to offer this, I wanted to do something that would help us open to the chorus of voices that are inside of us. Um, they, and, and for some, this may be the, the chorus of ancestors that, of, of the person you're living with. And for others, this may be the chorus of ancestors in, in your own heart. Um, it may be the guides that you've been collaborating with for, for years to bring this work forward, and they are ready to work through you and with you to bring you know, a new message in a new way. Um, and for some, it's, it's inherited trauma that's activated and, and alive inside your body and, and kind of creating this, this pause, this freeze response, this fear, this, this massive destruction. 
and distraction, you know, um, inside your, your, your well-being. Um, so my hope for this call, my intention of this, for this call is to help you to, you know, tune in, tap in, and at least learn one, one or two skills for asking, you know, who is it that's inside my body right in this moment that's trying to communicate with me, that's got a message for me? Um, you know, how can I unpack that, unearth that, understand it, and integrate it into your everyday being? I think I'll um, kind of shift. In about a moment, I'm going to ask um, for somebody, a courageous, um, a courageous, vulnerable uh, co-explorer of the underworld to volunteer to be part of a demonstration around this kind of tuning in practice. Um, uh, and this will be, uh, we will be, the whole group will actually be tuning into your heart in some way and um, opening to the field of consciousness. So there will be uh, insights from within you revealed. And I would just, you know, sit to feel and if this is something that that you would like to do. And, and Ari, I don't know if you have them raise hands or type in the chat screen, but I'll, I'll just let you pick the person uh, based on who, who comments or raises first. Um, sure, yeah, so the raise hand, um, I think is down somewhere. <laughs> I don't see it on my, on my. You can just write in the chat if you want to volunteer. <laughs> okay, Hazel. And Cliff, both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you said Hazel. So, I'll go with Hazel um, first. Yeah, great. <laughs> but I don't, I don't see Hazel. There's Hazel. Okay, great. So just, just knowing that you don't have to unmute or anything yet. I just wanted you to know, tee you up. Um, um, and I think uh, I want to just introduce the first practice. No, no matter what I do. Um, whenever I'm going into a place where I'm going to drop in deeper to my body or step into a healing process, I always want to amplify uh, my vibration. Um, in some ways, that the highest vibration in any container is the vibration that, that um, the whole room will, will entrain to. So if you're, in a, if you're in a room and there's somebody there who's kind of holding a very low vibration, you'll see that people will drop and, and kind of move, oftentimes move, or you sit around and like, think about a, a holiday dinner with your family. Um, you know, how high vibration can the group go to? That in, in many ways we can, we find ourselves in training to the lowest vibration in the space and just bringing what we can there. The, the, the tool and the tip I've learned in, in terms of my own energetic hygiene and well being is that if I work to tune my vessel, this like temple of my body, to the highest vibration possible, the whole space can lift up and rise up. That your your power is and your your capacity, your energetic field is that strong. And if you're in a place where you feel really lousy and you can't do that, you can always um, ring like a like a, a singing bowl and um, the sound of of one of these singing bowls. Or you might have a sound in your house, like a piano key or you could even probably download a sound, a singing bowl sound from the internet. Um, the, this, the sound carries a high vibration in essence. So at the, if, if you're really low, you cannot think of anything positive, you can't kind of engage in a breathing practice to, to build or amplify your own inner vortex, um, play some sort of sound that you can entrain to and connect with and, and raise up to and rise up to. So we'll just take a minute to just breathe together and close our eyes. And just take another deep breath in and a deep breath out. And just feel the soles of your feet on the earth beneath you. As you breathe in and you breathe out, just allowing yourself to, to drop into the center of your heart. 
Find a seat in the center of your heart. As you drop into your heart, just noticing if there's doors in your heart, windows, a moon roof. Noticing which way you're facing in your heart. We want to invite you to turn and, and face the back doors of your heart. These doors lead to a whole chorus of ancestors, a community of guides. That, that have been through what you've been through. And, and so much more. Every one of us comes from ancestors who survived all kinds of disasters, wars, famines, revolutions, new illnesses, colonizations, persecutions. Many of our ancestors saw our world fall apart. and faced events they could not control or could not understand. These ancestors live through the back doors of your heart. You grew from them. You are a, you're a flower on their vine. And you're still blooming. You're part of the life that continued. As you sit in the center of your heart, just, just notice the pulse, the vibration, the emotion that you carry. Notice the feeling that's present. And in whatever way feels right to you, you might crack the doors open to see who stands behind you, who's with you on this call, whose wisdom is present to support you. You might offer them an invitation to come present Maybe even perhaps ask how they manage their fears, how they manage the panic or the collective overwhelm of their time, and invite them to reveal themselves and their, their ways of survival to you. But part of amplifying your vibration and increasing your capacity to, to hold all that's happening it is connecting to our roots. The, the way a, a tree drops its roots down into the earth during the winter, closes off its branches and goes down deep. We, we too need to reach deep to go back to connect to our roots, to remember where we come from, to activate the, the ancestors and guides who want to support us. And to welcome them to be a part of our, our being and our presence. And you, you can find your way, whether that's to open the doors a little bit or peek through the peephole, but we just wanna notice who, who's with us. Welcome them, feel their vibration in your body. And as you feel ready, you can turn in your own heart and face forward again with them behind you. Get 
You begin to wiggle your toes and wiggle your eyes open and come back to the call. And as you flick your eyes, just, just notice all the people on this call and just imagine each person with a community behind them. As you, as you look at the faces, just see how far back they run, how deep they go. And recognize that all, all of these people, these energies were here with us at the beginning of the call. That they're always with us. It's just a matter of what, whether we want to call them forward. So I'm gonna um, I'm going to, to start with um, demonstrating a bit of a tune in because we're going to be using tuning in through this uh, through this whole process. After the demo, um, we will uh, actually stand up and engage in kind of experiential process of dropping into you know who's a part of your ancestral field. But I want I wanted people to practice you know how to tune in, how to work with this this skill set and how to use it in everyday life. So we're going to practice with Hazel. Um, so Hazel, you would just need to unmute your, um, your screen or unmute your audio. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for your courage. Okay. Um, so I just want to start by asking just what uh, what prompted you to get, get on this call? What feelings are you having? Um, what's the feeling that's descending on you the most with, with uh, the grace intensity during this time? Mm. Well, the reason I'm on the call is this morning, two people from very different parts of the planet sent me links saying, hey, you might be interested in this. And um, so I took that as a sign. And I've been doing a lot of ancestral healing repair work with my lineages and it's some it's a resource that I've been leaning into during this great metamorphosis that we're in and just curious to explore that with somebody else besides the people I've done that in the past with okay and how are you feeling how are you facing how are you feeling inside the the experience of the pandemic um interestingly the general theme for me has been curiosity and excitement and that doesn't make a lot of sense up here, but that's what's alive in my body. I dip into all kinds of other emotions and um, heaviness at times. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very curious about this process. And in this great, it just feels like we're liquefying myself individually and our, our whole society. And curious, what are these, like how we're gonna orient into some other creature coming out of this chrysalis stage that, we, it feels like we're in. Okay, great, thanks. And I think I wanna get um, Chris's report too. Uh, if we could unmute Chris as well. I think he was second, right? Oh, Cliff, yeah, I'll mute him. Who was it? Oh, Cliff, yeah. And Cliff, I'm gonna ask you the same thing, just uh, same thing that Hazel shared, just what, um, what's alive for you in the pandemic? What kind of called you to this call? Uh, love and support. Uh, I've been feeling a lot of anger and depression and going through all these emotions and just having a community that is supportive is really important to me. And um, just being connected, staying connected is really important to me. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So what we're going to do is we're going to tune in, open our hearts to um, Hazel and to Cliff. And for some of you may choose just one, some maybe be comfortable choosing both. Um, but we just want to kind of practice using your organ of perception. When I'm with somebody and they're expressing, um, or I'm you know connecting by Zoom, I'm not with a lot of people, but when I'm connecting by Zoom to people, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm using my organ of perception. I'm not just like connecting from my head space. I'm connecting from a heart space uh, to feel kind of the continuation of, of life that they come from. So we want to just um, open our hearts to Hazel and Cliff and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. 
So we're just going to close our eyes. And Hazel and Cliff, you can also just close your eyes and just breathe. And those that are going to be opening their hearts, you just drop into your own body and just feel the guides behind you. They're kind of standing behind you. And as you feel ready, you can open the front doors of your heart to, to connect with the front door of Hazel's heart or the front door of Cliff's heart. And sometimes I just wait, I open the doors of my heart and I step out a little bit and I stand outside the, do the doors of their heart and I just wait for information to come. If perhaps they open the doors of their heart and let us in. Perhaps you stand outside for a while. The question I'm always asking is not, you know, what is causing Hazel's feelings of excitement and curiosity, but, but who is her curiosity? Who else is there in her curiosity? Who else is there in her excitement? In Cliff's need for love and support, who does he share that need with? Who else in his, in his family system, in his ancestral field, needed love and support? Who struggled with anger and depression? Who else is behind him in his heart with that feeling? Who, who does he share those feelings with in love and in loyalty? So we'll just take a moment of silence to just drop into those questions and that field. If nothing's coming, just take another big deep breath and just invite whatever information wants to come forward. If you even ask the ancestors to come present, to share with you the story behind that person's heart. Be willing to clear your mind and just be with what's there, tr trusting all the images. As you feel ready, you can come back and open your eyes. I want to welcome any of you to, to write in the chat screen any of the impressions that came in that you want to share. Feel free. You don't, you don't have to, um, but it's there if you'd like to. I'll share what came for me. Um, Hazel, do you want to, I think I'll have, I think I'll have Hazel and Cliff report at the end. I'll share first and then I'll have you share. 
afterwards. Um, so the first the first image that came was um, I had this image Hazel of of your father and uh, this image of you you moving um, that that there was kind of an he had some some form of an adventurous spirit and a lot of movement um, whether that's moving from place to place or uh, just traveling. But there's a way where it's kind of change is, is like deeply seated in, in your being. Um, and in many ways from his, from, it's a gift that you receive from his lineage. Um, and if you were to go further back in his lineage, you'd, you'd find people that when, when things went awry, they got up and they, they moved. They like knew, they knew how to move. They knew, they knew how to travel. Um, they knew how to shift to new lands, new ways of being. And, and there's, a, there's a way where this process is connecting you deeper to that resiliency in your lineage. It's like there's a movement and you're more at home in this type of a field than you are in the kind of the stagnancy of settled ways of being. And that's, that's the kind of the, the feeling, the, the origin I felt of your curiosity and excitement. Do you want to speak to that or un, un, unmute yourself for a moment? I don't know how to. Okay. I think okay. I'm unmuted now. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, that was very, that resonates a lot with what I do know of my lineages and also helped to clarify some things. But both my father's mother's lineage, they were Tarantella dancers and originally came even, they were movers from a long, long time. And that's how we move through and process and not just in my own body, but the larger collective is the work I do. Um, and my father's father's people, um, definitely more on the um, other dimensional realms, the kind of medicine people they were. So, yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. So you just, as we move to the next person, you'll just, just be with them, you know, welcome them, that they're, they're a part of the wisdom that, that's in your body and the part of, they're, they're excited. They're excited for you to get closer to them. Um, Cliff, if you could unmute yourself as well while I share what came up for you. Um, when I tuned into you, I felt this, um, just looking for my notes. I felt, I actually felt a grandfather come present, um, who, uh, knows something about loss, um, about, uh, some, some form of like, whether it was war or government, um, that came into his life and affected his, um, his path, his career, his movement. There's there's a way for you that is, this is like pulling out the rug from underneath you. It's, um, it's like everything you've been working for or moving towards is now like kind of crushed in, in, some, in some fashion. And it feels um, more institutional, systemic, like, like the government, the authorities, these larger kind of oppressive um, uh, forces are, are, feel like they're on your head. And it's, this isn't new for you, this is like, it's like every time you get ahead, something like this comes clamping down. Um, and I felt like it's more of the, uh, I, I was with um, what I thought was probably your father's father, but I also feel in your mother's lineage in the great grandparents realm. Um, so I felt um, this feeling of I'm, I'm like, F this, I'm screwed, you know, like this, this kind of a feeling. And it's like, it's old. It's an, it's an old pattern on, on in the great grandparents on the maternal field and in with the grandfather on the paternal field. Um, does this does this resonate? The thing that it brings up for me is my father's father was, um, was in Nazi Germany, so definitely the government had some effect on his life and what he did with it. So that's that's just one thing I can think of. Mm -hmm. It's like you have this calling that's bigger. You have like a really big calling for your life, and he actually did too. And he got pulled into a system. And, and for you, there's something about your work that you're supposed to be bringing forward right now and you feel stopped by the system. I guess, uh, I mean, I definitely feel stopped by something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I would welcome his anger, like that anger and depression. That, you know, the anger could be Nazi, the Nazi soldiers and the depression are the, 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 the Jewish uh, victims. And you're just holding them both. In I, have bo I have both sides of my family, so. Oh, perfect, that's, okay. That's weird. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so we are going to, and if you guys can look in the chat screen for everyone else's comments as well, but I, I want to give you, I wanted to give you an example of like how, where you can go. And we're going to just do an embodied practice on how to access that origin, 
how to use your empathic heart, not only for to heal your own body, but to, um, to be able to tune in and support others in understanding their emotions at a deeper level. Um, okay, are we doing okay? Is this like, is anybody, you know, have I lost anybody? Doing all right, okay. Okay, so if we're gonna, I'm gonna invite you to stand up and just tilt your video screen so we can see you all. I'm aware of time, so we're gonna move a little quicker. And I want you all to just stand and represent the feeling that has arrived in, in the last week, two weeks, three weeks, with everything that we're facing on a global level. And you're gonna stand and just represent that feeling. So you might close your eyes and breathe first. Allow your knees to bend a little bit so energy can move through your body. And just stand and just be with yourself and, and all the feelings you've been feeling. how this is impacting your, your life, your relationships, your work. Be with the emotion that descends on you. It may be hope and curiosity and excitement. And it may be a, a feeling of balance hijacked by this depression, rage, anger, fear, heart palpitations. It just be with the feeling you wish to work with. And as you feel ready, you're gonna take one step back into your maternal and paternal field. And you're gonna take one step back to the left and it, it will, you'll be standing with your mother. And you can feel, how does this feeling relate to a feeling your, of your mother? Did she carry this type of feeling? If the feeling in your body goes down, you might stand and stand with your father. And if the feeling goes up, you might notice that, that it, it, it's transmitted through the maternal lineage. We care any, carry anywhere from up to seven generations of trauma memory passed down through our lineages. So when you stand to the one step back to the left, that's your mother, one step back to the right is your father. And you might stand in both places and just feel, how does this feeling translate? Are they in both places or where is it most intense? How do I cope with the pandemic? Am I more like my mother or more like my father in the ways I'm coping? And you're gonna take another step back into the realm of your grandparents. And I, I would step back behind the parent where it felt the most intense. And first represent your grandmother and then represent your grandfather. And allow yourself in this moment to just close your eyes and breathe and just welcome your grandmother into your body like you're a, a, a portal and, and her energy can just merge so you can feel what it's like to be your grandmother. And you can stand with your grandfather and feel what it's like to be your grandfather. And just feel, where does that energy come from? Where does that feeling that you felt in the beginning, where does it come from? S similar to what we felt in, in both Hazel and Cliff's field, you might ask yourself, what context did they live in?
how were their feelings of positivity, of hope, of calm, of ease? How were they hijacked by, by the pandemic of their time? What traumas put them in a state of panic or despair or in a state of curiosity and excitement? If you still don't feel much, you might take another step back. And each generation take a step back and feel where is it most intense? Sometimes I have to go back four generations, four steps, and then all of a sudden the, the fifth step, the feeling goes away. And I go back to the fourth step. Go to the place where you feel the most intense feeling that you came in with and, and stand there and ask who's there with you. You may find yourself in a soul lineage when you step back. You may find there's, there's lifetimes before this where you felt this panic, where, where you knew a state of survival. Once you find the space and you find who's there with you, ask them, what wisdom do they have to share with you? What feelings are you feeling in your body that are theirs? And ask them if they can hold it for you. Many times these feelings kick up in our bodies because they're protective mechanisms for survival. Our ancestors want to protect us. They want to teach us how to fight back, how to lead, how to navigate all that's happening. These memories kick up in our bodies and we lose our center and we, we become merged with their consciousness. So you, you can just feel the wisdom that's there for you and the pain that you're carrying as well that, that perhaps belongs to them. And finally, take one more step back and feel the land your ancestors came from. Perhaps connect with the guides or the gods or goddesses that they prayed to and felt held by. Connect to their homes, the communities of helpers, that were there in this time. And just call, call these resources present, the, the ones that held your grandparents or great grandparents, the, the places that the, that the ancestors in your, in, your, in your blood, in your DNA, in your bones went to. Just like we are going to the trees and we're going to the earth and we're going for walks outside, they too did the same. You know, call, call in that land. Let it resource your body. I'm imagining you just taking that feeling and, and looking at your ancestors from this place. seeing this, this, this human in 2020, this great grandchild or grandchild existing on the earth, is showing them that you exist, thanking them for whatever they did or however they survived, that you breathe life today and that you still feel them in your body. You carry their rage, you carry their anger, you carry their grief, you carry their panic. You carry their love and their wisdom. And in this last moment, just allowing your ancestors to find a healing movement, to maybe lift the, the, the shawl of grief off your shoulders that was there to protect you. 
or the anger that's descended down to you, trying to get you to, to, to buck up and fight back. You know, keep giving that way back to your ancestors. Releasing the doubt, giving that back, and just, just taking their wisdom of survival, their blessings, and the breath of life that you're gifted. Take another deep breath in and deep breath out. And as you feel ready, you can just take a few steps back, forward to your place. Releasing your, the guides and the land and the ancestors you come from, perhaps shaking it off. I sometimes cut chakra cords or wiggle it out. And then you can come back to your seat. And um, in, in closing, I, uh, Ari, I sent you a second post to, uh, of like what things they, they could um, sign up for. So I'll, say, I'll share that at the end, but I just wanted to cue you to post that. Thank you for that. Sorry, I can't copy and paste. Um, I just wanna close with just a, a quote uh, by Clarissa Pancola Estes. Um, who's an author that wrote, um, and a healer that wrote, Women Who Run With Wolves. Um, I just love this, uh, this, write, this like writing and this, this quote, it's powerful. Um, and I, it feels like it's, it's the message to, to integrate right now. So, uh, my friends do not lose heart. We were made for these times. Ours is not the task, the task of fixing the entire world all at once, but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that is within our reach. Any small, calm thing that one soul can do to help another, to assist some portion of this suffering world will help immensely. It is not given to us to know which acts or by whom will cause the critical mass to tip toward, an, toward an enduring good. What is needed for dramatic change is an accumulation of acts adding, adding to, adding more, continuing. We know that it does not take everyone on earth to bring justice and peace, but only a small determined group who will not give up during the first, second, or hundredth scale. Your ancestors would say you're in the hundredth scale. One of the most calming and powerful actions you can do to intervene in a, in a stormy world is to stand up and show your soul. Soul on deck shines like gold in dark times. The light of the soul throws sparks, can send up flares, build signal fires, causes proper matters to catch fire, to display the lantern of soul in shadowy times like these, to be fierce and to show mercy toward others. Both are acts of immense bravery and greatest necessity. Struggling souls catch light from other souls who are fully lit and willing to show it. If you would help to calm the tumult, this is one of the strongest things you can do. There will always be times when you feel discouraged. I too have felt despair many times in my life, but I do not keep a chair for it. I too have felt despair many times in my life, but I do not keep a chair for it. I will not entertain it. It is not allowed to eat from my plate. The reason is this, in my uttermost bones, I know something, as do you. It is that there can be no despair when you remember why you came to earth who you serve, and who sent you here. I'm gonna read that sentence again. It is that there can be no despair when you remember why you came to earth, who you serve, and who sent you here. The good words we say and the good deeds we do are not ours. They are the deeds and deeds of the one who brought us here. In that spirit, I hope you will write this on your wall. When a great ship is in harbor and moored, it is safe. There can be no doubt, but that is not what great ships are built for. When a great ship is in harbor and moored, it is safe. There can be no doubt, but that is not what great ships are built for. Dr. Clarissa Pincola Estes. 
Um, this process in, in 40 minutes is not the most deep, profound ancestral healing, but it is the beginning of you understanding and making contact with who brought you here, with why you're here on earth and the wisdom that's alive in your bones. Um, I posted in the promotional chat screen um, a link for a four-week online series that my partner Dan Cohen and I are facilitating um, starts tomorrow. Um, it's called Understanding the Great Mystery, Your Life in the Pandemic. And I also, or Aria also posted a link to work with, um, uh, a link to my website to be able to work with me privately if you're interested in doing uh, deeper work. Um, in the meantime, friend me on Facebook and uh, reach out. There's all kinds of great resources going around. I would love to be in community with you. Thank you all for uh, this time and thanks Aria for this space. Thank you so much, Emily. Really beautiful to get to tune in with everyone and feel our, our lineages. And um, I want to, yeah, definitely encourage if you're all curious about one-on-one um, -on -one work or the, um, the upcoming group with Emily and Dan. Hi, Dan. Um, then uh, it's, uh, it's sure to be very profound and healing and um, definitely welcome everyone to, to check that out. Um, I want to uh, also uh, let you know that there'll be a few more Rise and Resiliency events. We have a couple coming up next week, Monday. There will be a sound healing with uh, an amazing uh, friend of mine, Monique. And then um, Wednesday evening, the same time, there will be a somatic experiencing practitioner teaching some tools about navigating the nervous system and the body during this time. And then also a couple of sharing circles coming up these coming Friday, uh, this Friday and next Friday. If you just are looking for a space to, to drop in and share with other people what's, what's on your heart and mind at this time. Um, so you'll be receiving emails about those uh, as well coming up and um, I want to thank some of the local orgs. I'm here in Northern Michigan, and um, there's some organizations that have been uh, supporting this as well. They'll all be listed in the in the email. So thank you um, to some of the amazing local businesses that we're looking to support during this time. Some of the yoga studios and ethical local companies. Um, I want to give a shout out to all of them and invite you to check out their online classes and online shops if you are interested in, um, in supporting some folks who are doing really good work in the realm of resiliency, creating the, the community infrastructures that we're gonna need uh, to go back to when, when we are all allowed to again. <laughs> so um, once again, thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, let's take a moment to um, we've been kind of playing with this tool uh, as, as our closing tool. Um, if you rub your hands together really fast in front of your heart and build up some heat. And then with a nice big exhale, send that out to the world, to anyone experiencing sickness right now, to our ecosystems, to Mama Earth. Feel our love able to radiate out in this way together. Thank you. Have a beautiful night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful night.